Hey everybody, I uh, hope this uh, lesson helps. Uh, I'm not doing this in my class, so I'm just doing it to, uh, uh, just to help you guys on, on this next upcoming test. So here we go. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So find the area of the triangle to the nearest uh, tenth. Okay, so this is in module 17. We did, um, we multiplied these sides and then times the sine of that and then took half of that. Okay, so if we plug it all in, we get about 8.6, okay? Centimeter squared, okay? Here it says uh, find uh, the measure of angle C to the nearest tenth, so angle C. So we can't do the law of sines um, uh, because we don't know an angle. Oh, we can, we can. We do, we're gonna do the angle and the side opposite. So we'll do the side of, uh, the sine of B over nine equals, what well, we gotta find A first, the sine of A over four. Let's do that first, you guys, and then uh, uh, and and we get angle A to be about 26. So you know, triangle is 180. So we take that off of 180, and we get um, uh, we get 54. Okay, easy enough. Okay, so here we got to do the law of cosines here because we don't know an angle. We can't do the law of sines. The law of sines uh, lets us do the sine of an angle over the side opposite that angle. See, like back here. We had this angle and we had this side opposite. So the law of sines is much quicker. Um, otherwise, we've got to use the law of cosine. So here uh, it says find angle C. So, so we're going to go um, uh, the side opposite C. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. Okay, so we plug those in, crank those numbers out, and we get that. Subtract 181. Watch the negatives, you guys. You guys get, uh, if you make a mistake, it's because of the negatives, okay? So um, we get about 49.5 degrees, okay? Okay, so find the area of this. So the same thing, you guys. We've got to uh, find an angle. Well, we already found uh, angle C to be about 49.5. So the area is just one half uh, the product of the two sides times the sine of the included angle. Okay, so if we crank that out, we get about 34 point, I'm sorry, 34.2. All right, so convert from degrees to radians. So this is where we multiply by uh, pi over 180 because we want the degrees to cancel. So we want the 180 on the bottom. So the 180 degrees will cancel right there. All right, so the zeros cancel, and that's about it. So we get 7 pi over 18, okay? Here, same thing. Um, and then when we do all that, we should get uh, negative 21 pi over 4. I'm just saving time because uh, this is a long lesson. And then we're going to do backwards, uh, convert from radians to degrees. Okay, so here these guys are in radians, so we're going to multiply by 180 degrees over pi, pi radians. Okay, so the pi's will always cancel. And then uh, just start canceling out and, and you get those answers, okay? All right, so this says determine the sine and the cosine round to the nearest hundredths. Okay, so um, uh, this uh, area says we're in quadrant four, so cosine is positive. So sine and tangent are negative. So you guys remember a tangent is sine over cosine. So sine is when we multiply both sides by cosine. It's cosine tangent, so we're going to substitute that in right there into negative 4.580, okay? And then uh, we'll use this formula right here, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. I showed us uh, to that class, and I think it was, uh, I don't know, 18.2, something like that. I, I don't know. Uh, anyways, but I did show that to you, and then so we're going to... Since sine is equal to this, we're going to put this sine in right here, okay? So there it goes right there, and then when we square that, we get that. Now there's an imaginary 1, so we'll combine this 20.9764 plus 1 gets us 21.9764, and then we're going to divide. We need to get cosine squared by itself, and then square root it. Okay, plus or minus. The plus or minus part totally depends on this. Since it's in quadrant four, it's going to be the positive part, okay? And then to get the sine part, then we just substitute the, uh, this uh, in for uh, the cosine part right there. Um, and uh, so sine is equal to this times cosine, so we get sine equal to that decimal, okay? All right, so without using a calculator, evaluate the trig. So I'd like you to be able to recognize to take out the circles. 
So 360 is a circle, so when you start over at the circle, um, we get the tangent of 120, and tangent of 120 is in quadrant 2, so uh, all students take calculus, okay, remember that? So, so um, uh, only the sign's positive, so the tangent is going to be negative, okay, so so up there it's going to be a cosine pattern goes 3, 2, 1, so this is the one part of the cosine. So this, if we did this, 3, 2, 1, so root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2, root 1 over 2, they're all negatives because only the sign's positive, so 1 over 2, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2. So we get those, that ordered pair up there, and so when we plug that in, uh, don't forget to invert and multiply, and so we get root 3 over 3, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, so the tangent of 480 is root 3 over 3. If you guys gave me a decimal on that, I'd assume you plugged it into the calculator, and I wouldn't give you any credit at all, and I'm sure your other teachers would be just as accommodating. Okay, so uh, negative pi over 2 is down there, okay? So that has um, uh, the order pair 0, comma, negative 1. So cosine, comma, sine. So cosine is 0 down there at negative pi over 2, okay? All right, negative 16 pi over 3, okay? So that's negative. There's there's a couple of ways to do this, you guys. You can take out the full circles. I didn't do that on this lesson. Um, I did that. Uh, if I was going to do the full circles, I would have done uh, negative 12 pi over 3 plus negative 4 pi over 3. So anyways, uh, here, this is negative 5 pi. So this angle is uh, counterclockwise. There's negative 5 pi. Okay, and then plus a negative pi over 3 is going to continue right there. Okay, so um, uh, if we if we did that, the uh, cosine, uh, sine, comma, uh, cosine goes 3, 2, 1, sine goes 1, 2, 3. So this is sine, so 1, 2, 3, this is going to be uh, root 3 over 2 because all students take calculus. That one's positive right there. Okay, all right. I make mistakes all the time on that, you guys. So my students catch me all the time. So if I make mistakes in these videos, hallelujah, because I do it all the time. Anyway, I'm sorry. So let's uh, graph this guy, okay? So cosine uh, always starts and ends at 1, halfway at negative 1, halfway at 0. Cosine and sine have a period of 2 pi. Tangent has a period of pi. Starts and ends at 1, halfway at negative 1, halfway at 0. Okay, so this 4 is just going to say start and end at 4. Halfway at negative 4, uh, halfway at 0. Same thing. Okay, there it is. Let's try this one. Okay, so sine, uh, sine, the regular sine on 2 pi starts and ends at 0, halfway at 0, halfway at 1, halfway at negative 1. But this 1 is going to be multiplied by negative a half. Same with this negative one. It's going to be multiplied by negative half. Okay, so it's just going upside down. Okay, so let's write an equation. Okay, so you need to uh, to determine is this a sine or a cosine. Well, it starts and um, uh, ends at zero. So this one is a sine curve. Okay, so I know it's a sine curve, and I know the amplitude is two because it starts and ends at uh, zero. Halfway at zero, halfway at two, halfway at negative two. So, so, um, uh, and the period is uh, from zero to two. Okay. So the angle in front, remember, sine and cosine is two pi for regular old sine and cosine. So we have to take this period, which is two, and we take two pi and divide it by two. Okay. So two pi divided by two gets us pi. This is the number that goes in front of the angle, okay? Don't forget the amplitude is that 2. Don't worry. We've got some more of that stuff. Okay, so let's graph this guy. Identify the, the everything. So, you know, um, amplitude and all that stuff. So, did I uh, uh, give too much? I sure did. Golly. I didn't even give you a head start. Okay, I should have blocked out all of this. I will block out all of that. Okay, so let's pretend like we can't even see that. Okay, so um, uh, so here, let's pretend like this is all not highlighted right there. We're going to shift it to the left, pi over 3, down 1.5. So the new origin goes, I'm sorry, did I say to the left, to the right? 
So to the right, pi over 3, down 1.5. So that's the new origin. And then when we graph that new origin, all we have to do is worry about the red stuff right there, okay? So let's go back to that, okay? So now all we have to do is worry about that stuff right there. So let's graph this stuff, okay? So the amplitude is uh, uh, 0.5. So instead of it going up 1, it's going to go up 0.5. And then this 3 says 3 in 2 pi, okay? So 3 in 2 pi means that uh, it's like dividing, but we want to divide. We want to see how many times 1, 1 in uh, whatever. So sine goes in 2 pi. So if we divide by 3, divide by 3, we get... 1 and 2 pi over 3. So each period is going to be 2 pi over 3. So check this out. 2 pi over 3 is 4, four squares, I guess. So from here, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is where the, the period's going to stop. Okay, so our sine curve is going to uh, start and end at 0. It's going to be halfway at 0. It's going to be halfway at 1, but our 1 is going to be 0.5 and halfway at negative 1, okay? All right, so there it is, right there. Isn't that a beauty? Okay, let's try this one. Okay, I didn't cheat on this one. Okay, so here we're going to shift this guy to the left, uh, pi down, or up 3. So shift it to the left, pi up 3. Remember the tangent, you guys, uh, the period is in pi. And so the tangent, we like to show this area right here. So negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is pi right there. So as we go halfway over, it goes up 1 because that's 2. Go halfway over, it's going to go down 1. So that's our typical tangent graph right there. One period happens in pi. And this uh, textbook likes to show it from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Oops, sorry. Uh, so, sorry, it's a long lesson. So let's shift it to the left pi up 3. That's what that is. So now we can drop off this pi and this 3, and we're going to graph uh, y equals 2 tan or 1 half x. Okay, so this 1 half says 1 half in pi. Okay, so let's do that. So uh, 1 half of a period in pi, so it's like multiplying both sides by 2 times 2 times 2 we get one period in 2 pi. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to represent 2 pi, those asymptotes. So we're going to do go pi on the left, pi on the right, and that's going to give us our, our asymptotes right there. Can you see this is 2 pi right there? Okay, so we know it's going through 0, 0, or right there, and then we're going to go over halfway up one, but this one's going to be up a half, and then over halfway down one, okay? So there we go, right there, okay? I say up one and a half, up two, sorry. So there's our, our tangent graph. Isn't that a beauty right there? Hey, uh, good luck on your test, and let me know how you do. That would be cool. Take care.